Hi, I'm Arnold Liang, founder and CEO of App Innovation. Arnold, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for speaking with us today. Uh, I'm excited to hear about your entrepreneurship journey, your thoughts on Canada's entrepreneurship ecosystem, and specifically how we can make it better. Um, before we get into that, those meaty topics, can you briefly introduce Appnovation, the company that you founded and that you lead? And yeah, tell us what you do. What's your elevator pitch? So I started Appnovation uh, back in Vancouver. Uh, it was a company based out of my basement. Uh, with uh, no customers, no employees at the beginning. And then uh, over the first few years, we quickly developed a customer base in the U.S. That was our first uh, major cluster of customers with primarily in the U.S. Um, and we were fortunate to secure Pfizer as one of our first major customers. And then over the years, we grew more and more. We expanded to the U.K., uh, Europe, Belgium, Netherlands, and also Hong Kong. Um, and then over the years, became more and more global. So over the past 15 years, uh, we have now grown to about 450 people globally. Uh, we went past $100 million in revenue last year, and we're still expanding heavily. We grew about 40-something percent last year, and we're growing. We're looking to grow another 23% this year. So pretty exciting times. Awesome. That's an amazing success story, and I love hearing it. I just started from your basement out west in Canada. I want to know, why did you make that jump? What motivate you motivated you to pursue a career in entrepreneurship and if you look back at that do you think that there are core elements of an entrepreneur's dna what constitutes that for me like i was always passionate about building things uh, one, of my, one of my favorite video games was sim city um, i really enjoy seeing things grow and seeing things built piece by piece um, that's been the case since i was a child and when I was at UBC, I did a lot of entrepreneurship conferences and competitions. I competed at a few of the business planning competitions back then. Um, did pretty well in one of them. And that really got me started into understanding entrepreneurship and, and having a background of finance really enabled me to have a good foundation to understand numbers and growth and, and what all that means in business sense. Um, so I think all these different elements combined together uh, create a good foundation for my career as an entrepreneur. Now, obviously, the success of a company is heavily impacted by the, the sort of ecosystem or environment that it grows up in. Um, if you look at Canada's business ecosystem for SMEs, um, how would you describe its strengths and, and maybe even some of its weaknesses, if you know the same? I think Canada's entrepreneurship ecosystem has evolved a lot over the past 15 years. Um, as we saw a success of companies like Shopify, we're now seeing a lot more capital available to entrepreneurs within the country. And cities such as Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal have really grown to become tech centers and tech hubs where you can find really good, talented technologists to, to work at various businesses. So I think the ecosystem, the government support is now there. Um, and also Canada has really good access to the American U.S. market where there's some massive companies, massive customers that you can, you can tap into, and they're in the same time zone, in the same language, and similar culture um, as Canadians. So therefore, it's much easier to go down from Canada to the U.S. market. So these are all great foundations for a uh, technology entrepreneurship ecosystem. I would say even though the, the capital availability, the capital pools have grown much greater in the last few years, uh, there's still a big gap between the funds in Canada and the funds in the U.S. Um, this is a gap that's closing, but uh, I, I still believe that there's still a gap there. So access to capital is still much easier in the U.S. and Canada at this point in time. I think the Canadian government, the provincial governments, creating funds like in BC, creating, working with uh, partners like CBGF has really helped to um, enhance the ecosystem there. Um, I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done. There's, there's still a lot more capital that should be infused to the tech economy. So I think there's still a lot of work to do, but I think uh, a lot of progress has been made recently. You mentioned in your uh, your brief intro of Appnovation that you have expanded beyond that garage in Vancouver. You've, you've got offices in the US, in Europe, in Asia. Um, so obviously a, a global organization. Um, which is always the goal for Canada's SMEs, because as you mentioned, we're a small market. We, we benefit from having the U.S. on our doorstep, but 
going larger is, is always the goal. Um, what was your approach uh, in terms of how you uh, took AppNovation global? Yeah, I think in, in the early days of AppNovation, we kind of decided that going global is the way we want to be. Um, and also working with world-leading customers, especially in the pharmaceutical world, has really means that we have to be global in order to be successful with these accounts. Um, and we're really fortunate that our customers have really supported us through our global journey. Um, now we work with companies like Pfizer around the world um, and having the, 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 the team members that can follow the sun providing 24 seven support has been really key. So I would say it's always been our strategy to go global. Uh, we're still a small organization, like only four or 500 people. Uh, we still got a long ways to go in terms of expanding our footprint. So I believe that building a global organization is fairly critical these days for success because of the integrated world economy. Do you have advice to Canadian entrepreneurs who might be considering that next move or going through it in the early stages now in terms of what they should be keeping in mind, who they should be turning to? What have you learned along the way that helped you out? My advice to entrepreneurs that are looking to push their company global is that they really should start with um, countries that are a lot similar to Canada. So these are countries like the U.S. I mean, when I say similar, I mean the economy-wise, similar, language-wise, the same. Um, it's much easier for Canadians to expand into the U.S., U.K., etc., than into a country of a totally different language. So I would start with those and then slowly go beyond that. And you received funding from CBGF, the Canadian Business Growth Fund. Um, why did you opt for for that injection of capital and that investment? And What's it going to enable AppNovation to do? What's that capital uh, being used for? At AppNovation, we pretty much bootstrapped all the way from 2007 to 2019. So we did 12 years of business without raising a single dime, um, which really forced us to be cautious about costs. Uh, we, we have always been um, watching the bottom line. Um, but in 2019, we realized that once we, we want to go past the $50, $60 million mark and get to 100 plus, um, then we need to raise outside capital in order for us to invest heavier into a new area. So we did that, uh, raising in 2019, raising again in 2020. And that really enabled us to get to past $100 million mark last year. We do want to become a billion dollar revenue business. So we still got a long ways there, only 10% there. Um, but I think that would be the next logical step for us. Um, we got a great team that will bring us there and some good partners. So I would believe we'll get there at some point in the future. Awesome. And if you look back um, at your, your roots in Canada and how you grew out of a garage, um, to those young kids who are aspiring to do something similar, um, what advice do you have for them? Not necessarily for going global, but just entrepreneurship advice in general. What are the key things to keep in mind? Yeah, I would advise to give it a try when they're still young. I mean... Um, it's much easier to go as an entrepreneur when you don't have any kids, don't have a family, and there's less liabilities and, and less cost. Um, I mean, when I was starting the business, if things can go wrong, I can just go back to my parents and, and I can still live in my parents' house. Um, it's a little bit different now if I were to start over again when my kids are only four years old and a year and a half. So I will say start early and uh, because you're able to take a lot more risk at that time. Thank you.